everyday to day activities result in the production of different types and kinds of waste material. And of course, it is obvious that in our society, that most of our waste management practices are at best inadequate. This is particularly a problem when we consider a metropolis like Onicha Donidu, where over the years, Onicha has evolved into a major commerce, administrative, industrial, educational, and religious center in the southeastern part of Nigeria. This has resulted into a massive influx of people for, from in and around the southeastern part of Nigeria. And the problem that has to do with waste is that the more people you have in a particular location, then the more waste materials are produced. And of course, at this point, the majority of our waste management practices actually revolves around either indiscriminate disposal of waste or disposal of waste in landfills. And in both cases, they are largely undesirable because indiscriminate dumping of waste or even leaving waste in landfills can result into several, if not numerous, health and environmental hazards. Waste in the landfill, of course, can pollute the environment in many ways. For instance, you can have leachates, which are the liquid parts of the waste that can get into the soil and contaminate our groundwater and even the soil around the landfill. And of course, landfill serves as an excellent location for pests and rodents to breed uncontrollably, adding to the environmental health hazards that I mentioned earlier. Then another big problem is that when we dump organic materials in landfills, they in turn decompose and give off greenhouse gases that end up warming the globe <laughs> or leading to global warming. So it is very important, it is pertinent that we start the conversation around better waste management practices around us. And it is important because in a place like Onicha, most people are, are more centered in pursuing their day-to-day -day activities, like pursuing money or, or academics, uh, education and all that. And very few people sit back and think of how are my decisions affecting the environment with regards to the amount of waste that I produce. And it is important for us to also highlight some of the key sources of waste in Onija. And of course, we have household waste, we have commercial waste, we have industrial waste, we have medical waste, and we have waste coming from informal sectors, like, you know, your side, um, you know, side carpenter somewhere, or, or the mechanics, which is a very good example. You know, it's very, very common to look at and those mechanics and see all the oil spilled on the road and all that. And all this, they go a f like a long way to degrade the environment and even affect us directly because inherently we want to throw things away. But the truth is, there is no way. Everything that we throw, if the environment can't deal with it properly, it sends it right back to us. Which is why you would have heard a lot um, being said around the world with regards to microplastics. And this is when plastic waste end up in the environment and then they disintegrate into micro sizes and can be ingested by different life forms and ultimately ingested by us, humans. And then there's other ways that waste materials end up contaminating our environment and even the individual, causing us you know, a lot of disease and health issues. So it's important that we rethink this. And today I just want to challenge everyone that it begins with you and I. There are a couple of simple steps that we can take to help us reduce the amount of waste that we're making or that we're generating, reuse the materials that we have around us, and recycle or repurpose those materials that we cannot use for what they were primarily made for. So I'll give a quick example. Organic waste, for instance, can be harnessed into biofuel, into fertilizers, and other useful materials. 
And as a society or as a, as a city on it, we need to look into how can we take all the food and organic waste that is coming out from the millions of people that are living with, in and around our nature and turning them into energy, you know, into energy sources like, like biogas, like, like, like fertilizers and, 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 and so on and so forth. Another example would be our solid, solid waste, like, like our uh, plastic waste, for instance. That can be used uh, either recycled into the same product because most of the plastic waste are thermoplastics and the good thing about thermoplastics is that you can melt them and reuse them. However, the challenge is that you, you cannot mix different thermoplastics together. So it means that we have to learn even how to, to separate our waste from the home even before it gets to the municipality. And another big problem in Onitsha is the indiscriminate dumping of waste. You know, people throwing waste into drainage systems, dumping it on the roadside, littering. And of course, it is very apparent that we don't have roadside bins and all that. And we even have to push for avenues like that, whereby we can give the average pedestrian a place or a point to put their waste for collection. However, it shouldn't only stop at the collection. We have to go from the collection to the transportation and the handling. So this calls for partnership between the public and the private sector. So from us as individuals and also from the government, because the biggest aspect of waste management also revolves around fund. And one of the biggest problems we're facing, especially in a city like Onitsha, is that waste management is not really taken serious and it's been exacerbated by increasing um, increase in consumerism as people just want to just consume things and move to the next thing and then of course there's the poverty element because people are so mindful of just getting their next source of income for their next food that they don't think about the waste they're generating of course there's lack of awareness many people are not aware of the impact of their decisions and actions and of course there's inadequate comprehensive waste management system. So all these have to be taken into consideration and we come up with solutions. And the nice thing is that the solutions are available. We just have to harness the solutions and save our, our environment. And again, I'll say this, we have to move away from a society that only thinks about throwing things away and discarding things to looking at those waste materials and seeing the value in them. And above all, what can be more valuable than us having a society or an environment that is clean, with air that is nice and fresh and breathable, and without the fear of our waste materials affecting our health? and of course our businesses because remember the fishes in the rivers are dying out because of the tons and tons of waste we're dumping in the rivers and and some of our rivers are not even drinkable even within our nature metropolis some of the, the waterways that was clean in the past hundred years is you know you, it's something that we can't even use now so we have to collectively work towards this and i'm here today to challenge every one of us one plastic at a time. What are ways that you can, you can reduce the amount of waste that you produce? It? If you don't need it, don't buy it. For instance, if you can use glass instead of plastic, use glass. For instance, and the reason is that glass can be easily recycled, it can easily melt it down, and it doesn't give you microplastic, for instance. So there are, there are things that we, we, we can do. And, the government has to also bring policies that can put the activities of industries and different formal and informal sectors in check. The mechanics, we need to stop dumping those engine oils on the ground. We have, we have to collect them and use them for other stuff, or at least store them until we can use them for other stuff. So it takes efforts from all of us, and I'm just here to encourage everyone that there is real value in the waste that we produce. But that value can only be made useful if we take active 
steps in harnessing the values. So today, make it a point of call to raise the awareness amongst your, your friends and the people around you and let's keep on childhood clean and hopefully bring it back to the pristine environment we used to have in the olden days. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great one.